The National Student Financial Aid Scheme has grown from dispersing 21.4 million rands to almost 50 billion rands since its inception in 1991. Currently, over 1 million students have applied for funding by the National Student Financial Aid Scheme in the country. The process, however, has not always been smooth, including recent challenges such as the budget reduction by the National Treasury uh, money owed to tertiary institutions as well as monies owed to the scheme by previous beneficiaries among other problems that have been going on. Bahai Tudumelang, good evening. My name is Tabo Mulukwani. Welcome to this edition of Soweto Today. Tonight we'll look at the current challenges faced by the National Student Financial Aid Scheme, the impact that uh, you know these have on students. Now joining us in studio to have this conversation is the uh, SRC President uh, Kamukhetri Masike from the Tswana University of Technology is joining us in studio this evening. Kamukhetri, much appreciated for coming in. Uh, welcome to the show good again. Evening. Good evening, Tabu, and good evening to your listeners as well, my brother. Much appreciated. Um, I mean, there's quite, you know, a lot of issues uh, that have been happening um, yeah. uh, since we last spoke. Okay. Uh, but, uh, you know, before we get into the conversation, I want to get your thoughts on... Um, the recent media briefing that happened uh, by the Department of Higher Education. They've now introduced, uh, you know, another measure of, uh, in terms of funding. They're saying that students who fail to obtain 60% uh, course average will no longer receive uh, financial aid starting from next year. That was announced by um, the Minister. Higher Education Minister yesterday. Uh, I want to get your thoughts on that. Look, uh Tabo, we've maintained our position as student leaders across institutions of higher learning that access to education is important because for the longest of time we've been experiencing a situation in South Africa where black students are denied access to education. And this comes as pronouncements like this where you find a minister that is a, is a public speaker, a minister that is fluent in English speaking in a podium and misleading the nation. Just uh, two weeks ago, the minister had a media briefing where he announced boldly that uh, the department has introduced a system again that seeks to assist the missing middle. And mm -hmm. we've always maintained that in South Africa, there's no such a, a, a category called missing students because in a, South, in a country like this, you only have the rich and the poor. And we've always maintained that the rich are the ones that are getting privilege, uh, privileges in these institutions. Uh, it, in particular, white people. White people are shareholders in these universities. White people are stakeholders in these universities. And black students are the ones that uh, you know, uh, have to suffer uh, from time and time again. And we, you know, we, 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 we always maintain that such pronouncements do not excite us because these are some of the things that we've always, you know, called upon for, that government must make initiatives that would seek to open gates of higher learning to black students. Because mm. these are the very same black students that come from uh, poor, uh, 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 of the poorest uh, backgrounds, communities, villages, and rural areas in this country. And we've always preserved that it is important that government must always make sure that uh, access to education is accessible to these to these kind of students. So, of course, the mm. pronouncement that you are then referring to, uh, we sixty percent, and it, it, it's good uh, that uh, you know we ought to have such uh, measures put in place to make sure that uh, you know funding is always available to the eligible. And who are these eligible students? These are the students that are passing in institutions of higher learning. Because I must also state it categorically clear that we are the biggest proponent of excess and success and anything that seeks to speak to academic excellence, we will always uh, 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 give it our utmost support. So if the, the minister says that average is 60% for you to be eligible for funding, it is good because it encourages our students to stop sleeping in, in, in their residences, watching Netflix and TikTok, but it also encourages them that they must go to their books and study such that in the next academic year they are given a, a funding opportunity. Yeah, Mahito, I mean, you, you know, we speak about uh, the importance of the 60% mark. Obviously, somehow it will propel them to, you know, go the extra mile. 
uh, in terms of knowing that uh, we have to make sure that we study very hard so that we can we keep can the funding. funding yes. uh, but I, I want to talk about the one million applications uh, for, 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 for this year. We know the budget, obviously, uh, you know, it's, it's a bit limited mm. uh, as a result of uh, the budget cuts that mm. uh, actually were announced last year by yes. the Treasury there. Yes. Um, what impact, the funding, um, uh, what impact will it have uh, on, on, on these students? We know that uh, it's one million, but they won't be funded, uh, all of them. True. We are not going to celebrate figures numbers that government will want to you know uh, get excited in terms of them pronouncing that nasfas is going to or oh, we have received uh, 1 million applications 750,000 have been accepted 68,000 if i'm not i think it's 68,000 yeah. uh, must still on board in the system i want to celebrate that because nasfas is collapsing What's the use of rejoicing that a particular number of students have applied and yet the very same students are the ones that have to suffer uh, glitches of this system. Uh, these are the very same students that go home at the end of the academic year without having to have received the allowances. It is a registration now. These white universities and some of these institutions, traditional universities, are demanding a registration uh, up front. These students are historically indebted. They must settle debt in order for them to register. NESFAS is collapsing on a daily basis. If outstanding fees have not been settled. How are those students going to pay for this registration that universities are imposing to the poor students? So we're saying that we're not going to celebrate numbers that one million, one million out of a collapsing a, a entity mm -hmm. where you find executive officials sitting in expensive restaurants, eating expensive steaks and all of that, discussing processes of NESFAS that uh, 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 they have hegemony over manipulating some of these processes. We're not going to celebrate that. Indeed, we do encourage students, of course, to apply for NESFAS and all of that, such that they are, able, they are given funding, they are given, given uh, access uh, to these to, to, to these institutions of higher learning, but we're saying that NESFAS is collapsing on a daily basis, and no one wants to be held accountable. As we speak now, many students are still waiting for their refunds, and these are refunds that uh, you know, <laughs> uh, uh, some these application forms of refunds were submitted in institutions last year. These are the very same students that did not receive meal allowances for December. We are. Uh, we are spearheading now in the new academic year and those students are, are, are confused as to what must happen. So okay. we're not going to celebrate that. So I'm going to park you there. Uh, we're going to get to that conversation, especially looking at the announcements that were made uh, regarding the uh, uh, you know, allocations that uh, are still uh, to be paid by NSFAS. So we're going to take a quick ad break. When we come back, uh, we get a sense from uh, Kamahetsu, especially looking at some other issues, uh, looking at the issue of certificates that are still outstanding for students that are finishing, you know, they don't know where to go uh, in these instances. We're going to take a quick ad break. We're coming back after this. Welcome back, you're still watching Soweto Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. We continue the conversation on the National Student Financial Aid Scheme's ongoing challenges that are seemingly affecting students. Still joining us in studio is Kamuhetsu Masiko, who's the SRC president of the University, the Tswane University of Technology there in Pretoria. Uh, Kamuhetsu is still with us in studio. Uh, Kamuhetsu, um, there's quite a lot of issues. We know that um, you know, while we are talking about the NSFAS issues also, yeah. the outstanding certificates, yeah. uh, you know, for a lot of students, um, we talk about their diplomas, their degrees, yeah. can't find jobs, yeah. uh, you know, because of they either are owing institutions yeah. also, and then now they are holding them. Uh, we've got quite a lot of people uh, that, uh, you know, have expressed their discomfort and yeah. dissatisfaction to this uh, issue. How do you think this issue should be resolved? Uh, universities um, should be able to understand some or somehow that uh, yeah. you know there can be a plan that should be made, or maybe government should intervene. The first protest I led at the Tony University of Technology before they expelled me as a president, the first demand in the memorandum of grievances that we wrote as the SRC at the time 
was that the university must release certificates because the minister has uh, uh, declared, uh, actually he gave a license to institutions of higher learning that they must release certificates uh, such that graduates are able to go and look for jobs and all of that. So I think with my university at the time when I was president, uh, we managed uh, to champion that issue because as we speak, many graduates traveling across all parts of this country come to the university to receive their certificates because we have held executive officials accountable. We have held officials of that university accountable to say that we are not going to agree that uh, certificates of students are used as a means of leveraging against historic debt. We understand that these students are historically indebted and you are an institution of high learning that prioritizes profit over the education of a black child. We understand that is your main agenda, but we're saying that the minister has made a pronouncement that certificates must be released. And we're not going to open these gates if these certificates are not released. We held the CFO who likes to sleep even in some of the meetings that we used to attend uh, to, sleeping uh, when we are asking some of these difficult questions. That, But why are you withholding certificates? Because we have a crisis in South Africa where there's a high level of unemployment uh, and we have many, many, many graduates uh, that have graduated with cum laude in this institution mm. and can't find jobs because you are sleeping in this office and you don't want to give uh, them their certificates. So we're not going to open these gates. We bent tires uh, because we had to deal, we had to show uh, actually that uh, we are not going to uh, 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 be uh, SRC members who just be obsessed uh, with taking pictures with CFOs and directors and other, and other, and, and, and other people there uh, uh, while discussing uh, sensitive issues like this that have to speak uh, to the future of a black child. Let's talk about your expulsion. I know that, uh, you know, the university expelled you. Yes. Uh, you know, you've raised your concerns um, about how the process unfolded and yes. stuff. Maybe just take us through what actually transpired and then what is the current situation now? I led a protest, a national protest, uh, that spoke to the termination of uh, the direct payment system that, yeah. uh, what, that we saw as a fallacious process. Uh, and I must also emphasize that at the beginning we were never against the system uh, because of the grounds that were brought to our attention uh, and what it seeked to achieve at the time. But the implementation process was a crisis. And uh, I led that protest and I was suspended uh, for two months uh, from the institution. I was prohibited from even using a toilet of the university. I was prohibited from using even a library of the toilet of, 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 of the university. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I had to go to I had to go home, uh, you know, failing to understand the crime that I've committed in this university because I had asked them a question that but what did I do wrong? Because the only thing that we have demanded here was the attention of the Minister of Education, Dr. Bladen Zimande, to come on the ground to rigorously. Uh, address some of these concerns that students are raising. Students have raised concerns that uh, money disappears in their accounts. Uh, Fly-by-night companies have been appointed for the disbursement of these allowances uh, and students are on a daily basis uh, being defunded. And we had raised these genuine concerns to officials of the university sitting in serious meetings speaking about this issue. Uh, but they saw me as uh, I do not know what. I do not want to speak on their behalf because I'm not the official spokesperson of the university. But I was suspended uh, and I kept on writing to the university that, but can the DC come so that I know uh, what must happen moving forward? Can the disciplinary come uh, so that I'm able uh, to, because even the allegations that uh, were leveled against me are fallacious allegations. Uh, and etc. So I went to DC. My DC kept on being postponed uh, more than four or five times. My DC kept on being postponed uh, up until uh, I think it was the 7th of September, if not October, where I sat in an official DC and I was found guilty. And I asked my, them a question in that DC, but how do you find me? How do we reach a verdict that finds me guilty? Because as we speak, students are defunded. Students have been chased out of residences. Students are crying on a daily basis mm. that meal allowances are not 
uh, entering our accounts and what is to be done and you are, you are, you are, you are, you are expelling me and they expelled me from the university they gave me a, a suspended sentence of two years taking me to a toilet as uh, declaring that I must be quiet for the for the remaining two years uh, of my time spent in the university as a student leader meaning that I, ca I can't be a voice of students anymore I can't be an activist in my own right post my my time spent as an SRC member because before I'm an SRC member uh, serving in governance organs of this institution I'm an activist are you saying that I must not even speak about issues that affect students? And I can tell you now, my brother, I'm back in the villages, the village, the very same village that I left, because I left the village going to an institution of higher learning to seek for greener pastures, to seek for a better future. And I became active there when I got to the to, when I got to the university. The very same university has taken me back to the village uh, that I came from, expelled for two years in the university with a suspended sentence with no solid ground as to why because even the president of this country mm -hmm. uh, he, he was attending uh, I, I think he was attending um, uh, he was doing a side visit in Limpopo and one of the journalists asked him that what is he doing as a state president in addressing the national conundrum that confronts institutions of higher learning in South Africa and uh, you know I was not happy with his response uh, uh, that the, the government is still looking into this matter. It's been more than eight months, more than nine months, the academic year has collapsed and you are still having executive government still looking into this matter. But that said to us, indeed, we have not committed any crime in the university and given an opportunity again, we'll use the very same formula to address the issues that confront those that we lead. Come ahead, say we're going to park it. We're running out of time, but, uh, you know, we've got so much to get through uh, before we wrap up the conversation. Let's take a quick ad break. When we come back, uh, we wrap up uh, the show. Welcome back. Uh, you're still watching Soweto Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. So we continue the conversation on the NSFAS woes and the impact this has on the students who are in desperate need of funding. Kamohetsu Masike, an expelled TUT SRC president, is joining us on this conversation. But uh, before that, uh, we're going to watch an inset of uh, uh, the briefing that was held by the Department of Higher Education. And if our NSFA spokesperson Ishmael Mnisi uh, just talking um, more about uh, the allocations uh, that have not yet been paid. Let's take a look. In relation to the uh, delays that might be caused by the um, uh, payment of uh, the registration fee, the minister indicated in his address that uh, there is an advance or an upfront payment that has been uh, paid, uh, that will be paid to institutions uh, by the 31st of this month, which uh, would uh, uh, enable institutions to register all NSFAS uh, uh, students. And that uh, is, is done in order to ensure that there is no delay in the beginning of, of the academic year. And, and, and that amount, of course, it will go for tuition and accommodation. Uh, yes, of course, the allowances that we have indicated here will be paid this year. All the adjustments that the minister has spoken about, they are effective. Uh, for the academic year 2024. There was uh, NSFAS spokesperson Ishmael Mnisi. I must say that we tried to get hold of them uh, to join the conversation uh, this evening, but uh, uh, they are not available. Kamahetsui, uh, I just want to get your response to this. Allocations have not been paid since last year. You spoke about it. Yes. December, we saw a lot of students, uh, you know, yes. being desperate, not being able to go home. Yes. They are promising that by the end of this month, before the academic year starts, uh, actually in February, yes. um, they're going to be paying. Are, are you confident? Do you think it's going to happen? I shame. I don't believe anything that these guys uh, have to say. Because even the national spokesperson of NASFAS, he has copied the behavior of the minister of being a dally, dally there, speaking a lot of English, lying to the media and lying to the country. So whatever that uh, these guys are saying, 
uh, we don't believe them. It's, it will only be a miracle if it happens by the 31st where we see payments being made in institutions of higher learning because as we speak, registration is underway. Uh, many students are queuing uh, as we speak, but we don't see white people in those queues, but it's only black students queuing, uh, awaiting to pay registration, of course, acknowledging debt and all of those issues uh, before you register. So it will have, if it happens, it will have assisted many black students that come uh, from uh, these uh, you know, uh, households that I've mentioned that uh, there is no sufficient capacity to assist uh, those students to have better access to education because you'd understand that, of course, when you have received your proof of registration as a token, it then gives you a license to go and look for accommodation. So for as long as these students have not been able to register, it means that license to go and look for shelter, they, they, they still don't have it with them. And these are students that come from rural areas. Uh, and you know that historically in institutions of high learning, in spaces like, in times like this, students picket outside, they sleep in toilets, uh, they sleep in libraries. We even go to an extent of even opening classrooms for them uh, because you understand that they can't travel back home. Uh, they must remain in the institution. So of course we are then calling upon for the for the speedy implementation of this uh, injection of money to institutions. Before of I let you go, uh, yes. Kemahetu, I mean, are there any plans that you have as, uh, you know, um, um, an activist like yourself, um, your colleagues, uh, they're still there. I believe they haven't voted for a new SRC yet. So have you spoken to them? Are there any plans to assist the students? Because we know that uh, there's going to be problems come, uh, you know, February. We encourage uh, those that are leading. Uh, that they must hold executive officials accountable. They must not be in these uh, governance uh, positions uh, just for uh, being friends with officials of the university, uh, polishing their CVs so that whenever they get, uh, when their time lapses as SRC, SRC members, they have a soft landing. So we do encourage uh, our deployees uh, that uh, they must work tirelessly they must not sleep, uh, they must wake up at 3 a.m. Uh, and not sleep uh, in, in, in making sure that uh, we have a smooth process because whatever we have, we must also cite it that uh, these online systems of these universities are, are also failing us as activists in our own, in our own capacities because the, 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 when you try to assist a student with an online system. The system is suffocating off a lot of technical glitches. Mm -hmm. And we've, we always maintain a view that, but why must there be additional features in some of these things? Because the system is only tested once a year and uh, chances of this system collapsing and chances of this system excluding and denying a black child and access to education, they're very high. So of course, we, 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 we are still on the ground and we are still calling for free, high decolonized education. Kamahetu Masike, much appreciated for coming. I wish we had, uh, you know, more time to discuss, discuss quite of these issues. Yes. Much no, appreciated. Thank, no, thank you very much, Tom. That was uh, expelled TUT SRC President Kamahetu Masike speaking to us on the impact, uh, the ongoing challenges at uh, NSFAS, uh, you know, continue to have on the students. That we hope that uh, come February, uh, these issues uh, will be resolved. That's how we wrap up uh, today's conversation on uh, Soweto Today. Remember, we love hearing from you. So please feel free to talk to us about this episode. Simply send us an email. It's Soweto Today at SowetoTV.co.za. Call us or WhatsApp us is 081-531-8857. From myself, Tabo Mulukwani and the rest of the team, good night and thank you for watching.